James and Jennifer are on our side too. Besides, they'll be gone soon. At those words, my hand stopped. Hey, are you really going to do it? Don't say do it. It sounds bad. It's an accident. An accident. My eldest son David and his wife Lisa were talking so seriously that they didn't notice I was there. Jessica, the wife of my second son, spoke to me. Jennifer, call the police right away! At those words, I hurriedly called the police. I am Jennifer. I turned 71 last month. I have dedicated myself to household chores without working outside, spending 50 years with my husband, James. Thankfully, we have had a joyful time. We were blessed with two sons. It seems ordinary, but I think it's a very happy thing. James is the second generation president of a small wholesale company. He took over the company founded by my father-in-law 20 years ago. Blessed with customers, the business is going well. Now, our sons are working in my husband's company as executive directors. My eldest son David graduated from a famous domestic university. He's always been an excellent student praised by his classmates' mothers. I was proud every time I attended a class observation. He studied hard even after going to college and graduated as valedictorian. Then he joined our company, where my father-in-law was president at the time. I was worried that he was too serious and didn't know how to interact with women, and his relationships with women were a complete failure. But ten years ago, he brought home a beautiful woman one year younger than him. From what I had heard, she didn't seem to come from a wealthy family, but she always smiled at me and gave me gifts on birthdays. Living nearby, she often brought me food, saying, Jennifer, I made too much. I found her to be a kind, thoughtful, and intelligent woman. They didn't have children, but I loved David and his wife very much. The problem was my second son. My second son, Daniel, was not as good at studying as David, but he seemed popular with girls and during his college years, he was always with different girls. He barely graduated, and instead of joining my husband's company, he rebelled and joined a general company. There he met Jessica, a woman of the same age, and married her. Jessica, unlike Lisa, was unfriendly and kept our relationship to a minimum. She was very formal, giving gifts on Thanksgiving and Christmas and regularly coming home. But she seemed to want to keep her distance from us. She didn't want to live near our house and bought a condominium in the next town. Above all, I couldn't feel any warmth in her flat tone of speech. Daniel worked in a general company for about 10 years, then resigned and joined my husband's company. But he's free-spirited even in the company. My husband and David seem to have trouble dealing with him. But even such a son is dear to me as a parent. I expect David and Daniel to continue working hard for the company. One day, I went shopping alone. Spring is coming soon. I was looking for clothes to wear at the company's entrance ceremony. Although I don't work, I'm a director in name only. 
I rarely go to the company, but I occasionally work from home, preparing gifts for customers and socializing with other corporate presidents' wives. As part of that job, I attended the entrance ceremony every year. I headed to my favorite clothing store in the shopping mall. That's when I spotted a familiar figure. Lisa? It looked like her. No, but she was walking with a man. David is at work. It must be a case of mistaken identity. But I was still curious about the two. They went into a high-end brand store. I felt relieved. It was indeed a mistake. Lisa is supposed to be frugal. I've never seen her with any brand name items, and David and Daniel's salaries are no different from regular executives. They probably could afford luxury brands, but they would only buy them on special occasions. David wouldn't say it, but Daniel often complained to my husband. The salary is too low. I can't buy anything. I should have changed jobs. Daniel has children, so he probably has even less room for extras than David. Anyway, Lisa, who specializes in housework without working, would never go to such a high-end brand store. I made an unpleasant mistake. I found myself laughing at the thought, and I left the place. Then, my husband's company had its entrance ceremony. This year, there was one experienced hire and three recent graduates. It's not a big company, but about this many employees join every year. This year, all were locals, and I hoped they would work for us for a long time as we successfully finished the entrance ceremony. The problem came after. Heading to the president's office, I found Daniel and my husband arguing. It's strange, isn't it? Father must be doing something. Daniel was yelling at my husband. His face red. David was trying to calm Daniel down in a panic. What's going on? I asked in a hurry. The books don't add up. Daniel yelled. The books? I had no idea what they were talking about. I asked for details. Daniel said that no matter what, the numbers seemed off. You must be faking it. My husband yelled back. Don't talk nonsense. This is why second generation presidents who don't know the world... What do you mean? The argument between my husband and Daniel seemed to escalate. Enough already! At that moment, David's angry voice rang out. I'll look into the numbers. Both of you stop. Don't talk about something that might make other employees anxious in the company. David said to the two. The eldest son is reliable after all. I was impressed by David. My husband and Daniel fell silent at David's words. I felt reassured, leaving it to David. A few days later, David told my husband, There was nothing suspicious in the books, but there was one double payment. I contacted the other party right away, and they'll shift it to next month. Daniel probably thought that was strange. Thanks to him, we noticed. It's a good thing. My husband was impressed by David's words. The intelligence to explain Daniel's misunderstanding like this. Such an excellent son. I sometimes wonder if he's really mine. The business of April and the family quarrel had settled down, and I was dining with my husband. A long-awaited meal with my husband. We splurged a little on a course meal at the region's top high-end steakhouse, which had earned a Michelin star. The dazzling meal was a joy to the eyes. Soon we should think about paying David and Daniel enough 
so that they can take their families to places like this. I said to my husband while enjoying the meal. No, no, David maybe, but it's too soon for Daniel. My husband laughed at that. But Daniel has three children, and he's always saying his salary is low, isn't he? If he worked as hard as David, I might consider it. My husband laughed off my suggestion. Oh, come on, I replied somewhat exasperated. We had all the courses and our stomachs were getting full. I'll bring the dessert now, said the waiter taking our drink order and stepping back. My husband was content, sipping his coffee. Oh, a call. I'll be right back. The desert will be here soon, so hurry back. My husband checked his mobile phone and stood up. Left alone in the room, I sipped my coffee. A quiet atmosphere. I couldn't help but hear voices from the next room. So you see, that voice was louder. At the same time, it seemed like a voice I had heard before. Calm down, we're just saying we'll watch the situation for now. It was my eldest son, David. The previous voice must have been Lisa. Were they here for an anniversary or something? I was delighted to realize that the two were coincidentally in the next room. When my husband returned, we would go say hello. They would be surprised to see us here. I quietly waited for my husband. I didn't intend to eavesdrop, but I could hear the familiar voices of the two quite well. What are you going to do by watching? I don't think Daniel would notice either. No, their voices were quite loud. Fortunately, this room was the second from the back. The voices of David and Lisa and the farthest room should only reach here. It's good that it's us, but it would have been a nuisance to others. I thought I should warn them. However, what followed was not a matter of warning. It'll be fine. James and Jennifer are on our side. Besides, they'll be gone soon anyway. At those words, my hand stopped. Hey, are we really doing this? Don't say doing. It sounds bad. It's an accident. An accident. The two were talking so seriously that they didn't realize I was here, or that their voices could be heard in the next room. First of all, the money. You can deceive more, right? Last time I said it was a double payment, and they believed me. But what should I say if Daniel catches on this time? I looked up. Frozen. I didn't want to think about it. David had always been serious. But hearing this conversation, I turned pale. I was sure. The cause of the argument between Daniel and my husband after the entrance ceremony. It was these two. They were embezzling the company's money. I called my husband with trembling hands, but he didn't answer. Perhaps the call was taking too long. Someone I could rely on, I thought, and dialed my mobile phone again. Hello? That person answered immediately. Daniel, where are you? Come here right away. My second son, Daniel. He must have noticed my panic. He said he would come right away and hung up. Within five minutes, my husband arrived with Daniel and his wife, Jessica. He had met my husband outside, and he must have told him that I had called. Jennifer, what's going on? Daniel said you called him. I silenced my husband's words with a shh and a finger to my lips. The ice cream dessert that had arrived while my husband was on the phone was already starting to melt. I quietly pointed to the next room. The three exchanged glances. They quietly sat down and focused on the voices coming from the next room. While my husband was away, 
I had been listening to the terrifying conversation next door alone. And even as time passed, the two continued their conversation. Only when the waiter brought food did the conversation pause. And then it started again. I felt sick at being betrayed by David and the content of that betrayal. Lisa? Jessica whispered. The voices from next door were audible and my husband Daniel and Jessica must have realized who was there. So, daffodils, daffodils, you know? There are accidents where people mistake them for vegetables and eat them. Lisa's voice could be heard. The three probably didn't understand the content yet. At least there will be a hospital stay for a while. If we're lucky, a funeral. So, make sure the embezzlement doesn't get discovered until then. Daniel let out a small, what? So if that is the case, we can wait and see, right? David's voice was also heard. It was the same conversation over and over. No, we can't stop the money. At Lisa's voice, David said, If they find out, they won't hand over the company to me. It's impossible. There's no way they'll find out. Or rather, before they do, right? The conversation must have seemed serious. Jessica quickly activated the voice recorder on her mobile phone. My husband said nothing. Silent. Daniel was trembling with anger. Before they find out, daffodils. So that's why they were planted in the garden. Yes, that's right. I've been bringing in my cooking, and they seem to like it. So even if it tastes a little off, they'll eat it. Saying, oh, I messed up. I understood the two's plan and their hidden faces. What should we do? We need to feed them plenty. How much insurance money do you think they have? Lisa's cheerful voice was followed by loud laughter. Knowing father, he's got a lot on it. Finally, I'll be the president. It was worth obeying them all this time. David's triumphant voice. Daniel stood up in anger. My husband said nothing to stop him. No! It was Jessica who stopped him. Why? I said to Jessica. She was heartless. She hadn't been deeply involved with us, so it must have seemed like someone else's business. But Jessica calmly said, If we confront them here, it will play into their hands. Surely Jennifer and James will be swayed by David and Lisa. My husband and I fell silent. So what should we do? They're trying to poison father and mother. Daniel said. To that, Jessica replied, It's okay. We have evidence. So, Jennifer, please call the police right away. Huh? I flinched at those words. Wasn't calling the police going too far? This is outright embezzlement, and they're trying to put those two in danger. It's a crime. If we leave it like this, Jennifer and James will be at the mercy of those two. But Jessica's words made me realize, that's right, if we continue like this. The thought sent shivers down my spine. I hurriedly called the police. Jessica explained the situation to the waiter, asking them to slow down the service to the two and make sure they didn't escape. And she also apologized for the inconvenience. If she hadn't been there, Daniel and my husband, with their heads hot with anger, would have stormed next door, and I, drained of all energy, would have forgiven the two without doing anything. After a while, we heard the sirens of police cars. Hearing that, Jessica went outside to guide the police. The three of us were told by Jessica to wait in the room, as we probably wouldn't be able to stay calm, so we decided to do so. We heard Jessica and the police's voices, and then they opened the door to the next room. What? What is this? Lisa's voice was heard. Jessica? And the two seemed to have noticed Jessica. David, Lisa, 
I... I've heard your conversation. I thought it necessary, so I called the police. Let's talk at the police station so we don't cause trouble for the restaurant. Jessica's calm voice had never sounded so reliable. What are you talking about? We were just having a normal conversation. Yeah, what will James and Jennifer say when they find out about this? The two probably thought Jessica did this on her own. They mentioned our names and resisted loudly. You're trying to frame David by calling the police because Daniel can't become president? Don't take it out on us! Lisa said that. Hearing those words from next door, my husband stood up. Father! Daniel looked at my husband. The battle was still going on in the next room. For now, let's move. Jessica's voice. Following that, Can we ask you to come voluntarily? The police officer asked the two. Voluntarily? No! I'm not going! I haven't done anything wrong! Lisa said that. Yeah, that's right. There's no need to go. David's voice was also heard. Is that so? I thought you might have an excuse. Well, we're going to the police station now to submit a report. Shall we go? Jessica said that. She must have spoken to the police officer. The two didn't seem to feel any remorse. We had to go to the police station ourselves, so we stood up. I stumbled a bit. Daniel supported me. Mother, are you okay? Yes. Daniel had become quite reliable, though. He had been through a lot. We left the room. In the hallway were police officers, probably calling out to the next room. David and Lisa must have been in the back. Mother, are you there? David shouted as if he could hear us, probably having just realized we were there. His voice sounded frantic. If you want to make excuses, I think you should come with us. Next, the police will come with an arrest warrant to pick you two up. Jessica calmly said that. The two seemed to have stood up at her words. I had completely forgotten about it in shock, but Jessica had taken care of the bill. And so, David and Lisa were taken to the police station in a police car. We followed them in our car. When we arrived at the police station, David and Lisa, who had arrived earlier, seemed to be appealing to the police, saying things like, it's a misunderstanding. And it's Jessica's mistake. We could hear them from outside the room. Another officer guided us to a separate room. There, I told everything I had heard earlier about embezzling the company's money and about preparing daffodils to feed us. As I spoke, I became frustrated and started to cry. The officer was considerate of me. My husband also embraced my shoulder. Regarding the company's loss, please investigate in detail tomorrow and submit a report summarizing the embezzlement and the amount of damage. The officer said. Daniel responded to the officer's words. I can't forgive them for trying to endanger our parents more than anything else. Jessica stated clearly. I was happy that she was so angry for us. The officer said that since they hadn't actually acted, they couldn't be arrested for attempted crimes. However, it seems they could be arrested for a preparatory offense after listening to the conversation between the two that Jessica had recorded. They had actually prepared daffodils as poison and had been providing us with food to lower our guard. The photos I had taken of Lisa's cooking would also be evidence. I hadn't taken them with that intention, but I thought it was surprising how they came in handy. As I talked to the officer and listened to Jessica's voice, my sadness turned into bubbling anger. They must be arrested and made to reflect. But more than that, the feeling of being betrayed by my eldest son, whom I had raised with care, and his wife, whom I had adored, grew stronger. I thought they should see hell. 
I was scared of myself for thinking that. As a parent, I might be disqualified for thinking that way. But I also think it's inevitable to feel that way because I'm a parent. We decided, with Jessica and Daniel, that it would be best not to see David and Lisa. My husband, who was completely angry, didn't want to see them in the first place, and I might forgive them if I saw their faces. That's not true. I'm pretty angry too, but it was also true that I might forgive them if they apologized. We left the rest to Daniel and Jessica and went straight home. It seemed that Jessica's mother had come to play with the grandchildren, and she was taking care of them. So they told us not to worry and to rest. I was very grateful for that feeling. The next day, the police contacted us. In the end, the two didn't admit to anything. However, Daniel investigated the embezzlement facts and amount in one day. It was about ten years, starting from the first year of their marriage. They had embezzled nearly two billion dollars, sometimes a few hundred dollars a month, sometimes a large amount. When I heard that, everything went dark before my eyes. I had been deceived for so long. Jessica, who had come to care for me, took care of the housework and communication with the police on my behalf since I couldn't move. It seems that Jessica's mother continues to take care of the children. I feel sorry for causing trouble to my grandchildren. Daniel consulted with the police and filed a complaint. Now, at least David will be arrested. I feel relieved, regretful, and indescribable. But thanks to Jessica, I didn't lose myself. And they were also arrested for the preparatory offense. The planted daffodils in Jessica's recorder became irrefutable evidence. The two of them stuck to their claim of knowing nothing. They seemed to have no intention of reflecting on their actions. For the embezzlement, Daniel filed a criminal complaint against David and Lisa. It seemed that the embezzled money was being given to a man named Toshin, a club waiter whom Lisa was supporting. Did David know about this? If he knew, he's a complete fool. During the trial, Toshin was called as a witness. My husband was going to be the next president, so the money was good. I really didn't know it was embezzled money, and I have no feelings for her beyond being a customer. Just a customer. At Toshin's words, Lisa became frantic. Toshin, you said you wanted to marry me. I supported your sales. Lisa screamed. What are you talking about? You! David also yelled. No, really spare me. You know, it's just sales talk. It's impossible. Toshin coldly cut off Lisa. Serves her right. I almost burst into laughter. From this, it seems David didn't know. Apparently, he had been sending the money to his not-so-wealthy family. Caught by a foolish woman. It's a real shame. In the end, both were found guilty. As for Lisa, she was even rejected by her beloved Toshin in front of everyone. Jessica and Daniel laughed loudly when the trial was over. It really served them right. I probably saw Lisa with luxury brands before, and the man next to her was Toshin. I should have noticed at the time, but well, it turned out fine in the end and the two were also indicted for the preparatory offense. With all the evidence in place, none of their excuses were accepted. Naturally, they were found guilty. Although they were given a suspended sentence for this matter, they received a prison sentence for embezzlement, so they will be in prison for a while. David cried and apologized to me. But I had no intention of forgiving him. He was fired from the company. All insurance money was transferred to Daniel. 
My husband clearly stated that he would make Daniel his successor. David, now unemployed, divorced Lisa. It's really good that he broke ties with such a woman. I don't want to be involved with David anymore, but the blood connection cannot be severed. The police also told us to support him so that he doesn't make the same mistake. But David is an adult, and that woman is gone. He will surely manage to live on his own without relying on his aging parents. Trust doesn't return so easily. I probably won't be able to trust David until I die. After that, Daniel firmly took over my husband's work as a successor. I was truly helped by Jessica. Without her, this matter would not have been resolved. I went to Jessica's house with a thank you gift. Grandma! My grandchildren ran towards me, looking happy. Jessica saying, Sorry for the mess, guided me to the living room. There's some distance, so I hadn't visited Daniel's house in a while. Coming after a long time, it was so neatly arranged that I couldn't think of it as messy. And I was very pleased to see a framed photo of my three grandchildren, my husband, and me that we had taken some time. Jessica, thank you so much for everything. I expressed my deep gratitude. No, I've only done what's natural, Jessica said calmly as always. Actually, I used to be uncomfortable with Jessica. You didn't try to get close to our house, did you? So... I muttered softly. I knew you felt that way, but that's okay, Jessica said. I think of you too as Daniel's parents, and I truly cherish you. If I let my emotions get involved, it might lead to unpleasant feelings. So I thought it was important to keep some distance, to cherish you both. I was deeply impressed by her words. Lisa was always trying to flatter me, and I was deceived by her and doted on her. But I was really foolish not to have noticed Jessica's feelings for us. Grandma, look! A present! My young grandchild, Sarah, said, handing me a clay craft. Before Grandma came, Mom and I made it. When I said I wanted to make a present for Grandma, she taught me how. The small clay piece was misshapen and couldn't be called skillful, but I found the clay very dear. Oh, Sarah, thank you. Grandma is so happy. I'll treasure it. My words made my grandchild happy too. I'm glad Daniel married Jessica. My grandchildren and Daniel will be fine with her around. Jessica, thank you so much. I'm counting on you from now on. My grandchild, looking at me curiously as I spoke, smiled along with me. My name is Susan, and I am a 62-year-old homemaker. My husband, Joseph, was an office worker but retired last March and is now re-employed. We live in a place surrounded by farms, and many of the people here are farmers. During the farming season, I help out relatives and local farmers. We have two children, and we used to live with our oldest son and his wife. Our second son, John, lives in a nearby town in a used house. Our second son's wife is laid back and a bit airheaded, but she's a lovable and adorable wife. On the other hand, our oldest son's wife, Jessica, who lives with us, is quite responsible, and I thought she was just right for our careless eldest son, Danielle. However, she might be too responsible worrying about our family's future. As my husband's retirement was approaching, she was thinking about what's next even more than we were. My father-in-law's salary will drop significantly once he's retired. That means we won't be able to live as we have been. She said this with a scary face to my husband and me, so I thought she would take over managing the household finances. Before my husband retired, his salary covered most of her living expenses. Our oldest son also contributed to the living expenses every month, but honestly, it wasn't enough to cover his family and our five-year-old grandchild. 
I didn't know how much our oldest son was earning, but since our oldest son's wife was working full-time, I assumed they were doing fine. I took care of all the housework, including dropping off and picking up our grandchild from kindergarten. On holidays, they often left our grandchild with me and went out to play, leaving our oldest son behind. My husband complained to our oldest son about his carefree wife several times. Did Jessica go out to play again? She's always demanding things but does whatever she wants. Our oldest son who does whatever his wife says could only laugh it off. As my husband says, our oldest son's wife always interferes with our actions. When our grandchild was born, my husband bought a minivan so we could all ride together. But our oldest son's wife immediately intervened. Such a big car is inefficient if we are not going out as a family every day. She made a visibly uncomfortable face even though my husband was paying for the whole car. However, when the car was delivered, our oldest son's wife started using the minivan as the main vehicle, and even the gas card was in my husband's name. If we planned to go to a resort as a family on a weekend, our oldest son's wife would get angry on the day. I'm going out with my friends today, so I will use the minivan. Once she said that, she never changed her mind, and our oldest son's wife ended up using the minivan. It was strange that our oldest son's wife, who was so against buying the minivan, was the one using it the most. Our oldest son was even more interfered with, becoming like a servant to his wife. When our oldest son went to a dinner party with his colleagues, shortly after they were married, his wife was furious when he returned home. If you are going to be late, let me know in advance. The oldest son had mentioned a dinner party earlier, but his wife Jessica seemed to have completely forgotten about it. Even when my husband and I intervened trying to suit Jessica, her anger did not subside. My life's rhythm gets thrown off, so from now on, no more dinner parties. It was a selfish demand, but since our oldest son has a quiet nature, he suddenly agreed without arguing. Watching Jessica berate our oldest son even in front of her father-in-law and mother-in-law, I felt anxious thinking that this marriage was a mistake. Our oldest son's salary is entirely controlled by Jessica, and he receives only a small allowance. I felt sorry for him having to pay for his lunch from that little money, so I gave him a lunchbox. Jessica didn't seem to like the lunchbox either and complained to me. Don't send him off with a lunchbox without asking me. It affects our budget. I was so frustrated that I snapped back at her. The lunchbox's ingredients were bought with Joseph's money. So Jessica, don't interfere. Stunned by my words, Jessica couldn't argue back and reluctantly accepted the lunchbox for our eldest son. We were also taken aback by Jessica's attitude when our grandchild was born. During childbirth, Jessica had returned to our parents' house and even after coming back, she seemed to have little interest in caring for the baby. Since I adored my grandchild, I looked after him all day, but Jessica laughingly said to me, Mother-in-law, you should thank me. You can take care of your grandchild because of me. Seeing Jessica speak so arrogantly, I realized that she was different from us because Jessica doesn't care for the grandchild. He does not bond with her at all. Whenever something happens, the grandchild clings to me or my husband, and Jessica didn't find that amusing either. Even for kindergarten events, Jessica would show reluctance and say it's bothersome. Mother-in-law can go, right? It's none of my business. Although she probably wants to get along with her child, Jessica just can't make it work. Recently, she apparently went to pick up her child from kindergarten, a rare occasion, but he cried saying he didn't want to go home with her. When I went to pick him up after receiving a call from the kindergarten, I saw my grandchild running towards me with a beaming smile while Jessica had a complicated expression on her face. Lately, Jessica's main concern is about my husband and me after retirement. We had been telling our oldest son and Jessica for quite some time that my husband will be rehired after retiring, but Jessica always worried about his salary decreasing. I finally decided to propose something to Jessica. If uh, Joseph is rehired, shall we leave the household finances to you, Jessica? Jessica glared at me with a fierce look, but after thinking for a moment, she answered, So you mean that I will be in charge of this house? I nodded. That was my intention. Oldest son's wife, looking perplexed, nevertheless smiled and said, I understand from now on I will take charge of everything. Her smile was airy. But starting in April, when my husband was rehired, we decided to entrust the household finances to our oldest son and his wife. From the next day, the oldest son's wife handed me papers to record the utilities, monthly payments, and food expenses individually. The monthly payments could be seen on our banking cards, but the food costs were only roughly known. When I filed in an approximate amount, the oldest son's wife yelled at me. You have been buying groceries like this? How pathetic. You are a typical incompetent housewife. I felt like bursting into anger, but I wanted to see how well she could manage things. 
From April, we planned to live on the salaries of our oldest son and his wife, paying only our share of the food and utilities. But then the oldest son's wife demanded the same amount as before. I expect father-in-law to contribute the same amount every month, she said. My husband's surprise immediately replied, Aren't we living on Daniel and Jessica's salaries now? To my husband's words, the oldest son's wife responded with a laugh, Oh, what are you talking about? I'm only deciding how to distribute and pay. Father-in-law will pay as before. We didn't understand what she was saying and she added, If you can pay the usual money, please leave this house. You two outdated nuisances are in the way. Called outdated nuisances, my husband couldn't stand it any longer. How dare you talk to your parents like that? If we were a nuisance, we'll leave. It was rare to see my usually gentle husband so angry. We went to our room to discuss our future. I was worried about what we would do if we left, so I asked my husband, What will we do if we leave this house? My husband replied calmly as if his earlier anger was a lie. We plan to go to John's house. I've already talked to him. Surprised by his unexpected words, my husband continued with a happy face. Let's give that arrogant oldest son's wife and sloppy Daniel a taste of their own medicine. I still didn't understand what my husband was saying, but I decided to trust him. Our oldest son, who had heard that his wife wanted us to leave, was panicking alone. And, unable to stop her, a truly pitiful son. My husband had already begun preparing for the move and I started packing too. The oldest son's wife, a little surprised to see that we were really moving, kept making snide comments as we packed. Be prepared, I'll throw away all the stuff you leave behind. You outdated nuisance couple are slow in preparing for the move. I had always thought she was awful, but now she seemed to be showing her true colors, hurling one insult after another. Don't you think about leaving some inheritance for your grandchildren, since you don't have much time left in life? I had never seen my oldest son's wife so intense before, and I was stunned. But after she left, my husband was laughing. <laughs> she must be thrilled, thinking she can make this house and land her own. The area is rural, so there are many large houses, but ours is one of the most impressive ones. The house is old, but we have fixed it up many times, so we can still live in it. The land is quite spacious, so if we wanted to build single-family homes, there's enough room for four or five. A week after being told to leave this outdated nuisance of a house, my oldest son's wife came to me with a pleased look on her face. Are you ready to move? My husband replied with a smile just as big as hers. We'll be out by tomorrow, don't worry. We had already moved most of our belongings and only the valuables were left. My oldest son's wife didn't seem to care where we were moving to, she just wanted us out of the house. The next day, as we were leaving, she saw us off at the front door with a confident posture. Our oldest son was hiding in the shadows looking guilty and I was disgusted with him for being so controlled by his wife. Our grandchild didn't seem to know I was leaving and was crying in his father's arms. Leaving the house wasn't that sad, but I felt like crying for our left-behind grandchild. We headed straight to our second son's house and began unpacking. In stark contrast to my oldest son's wife, my second son's wife is always smiling and makes everything fun. When my second son got married, he bought a used single-family home and my husband helped financially. The house was too big for just the two of them, so I once asked him, Why did you need to buy such a big house? He replied with something profound. Dad told me to buy a slightly bigger house since he was giving me money. He was the one who introduced me to this house in the first place. I wondered why my husband had found a house big enough for two families when we already had our own. Looking back, was he anticipating being kicked out of our house? My second son and his wife, who don't have children yet, were living alone in this big house. They said they had been lonely, but now it would be livelier with us around. My second son's wife works but takes care of the housework and everything was in order. When I offered to help, she shyly asked, Um, I'm bad at cooking, so I would like you to teach me, mother-in-law. My second son, who had been listening, said with an exasperated face, That's right, my wife's cooking has a strange and mysterious taste, so please teach her properly, mom. Indeed, the meal my second son's wife made that day was all dishes we had never seen before and both my husband and I were surprised. A month after moving, we had heard nothing from our oldest son, and we had settled into life in our second son's house, as if we had always lived there. However, a few days later, I received a panic call from my oldest son's wife. Mother-in-law, the neighbors are talking about church donations and stuff, and someone claiming to be father-in-law's nephew told us to leave the house. What's going on? My oldest son's wife seemed confused and I was equally baffled by her one-sided rant. I tried to calm her down. 
She still seemed panicked, but something occurred to me. For generations, the people living in that house had served as church elders for a nearby church, and we had to collect donations every year. I remember my husband and I splitting the task and going around the neighborhood to gather contributions. We were also responsible for managing a nearby communal cemetery, collecting maintenance fees, taking care of the grounds. My husband overhearing my conversation with my oldest son's wife grabbed the phone and yelled at her. Our family has been the landlords of that area for generations, so we had to take care of everything. He continued with a triumphant look on his face. I forgot to mention, but that house and land aren't mine. They belong to my brother, but now his son, my nephew, has inherited them. I didn't know all the details, but I knew we were only borrowing the place. According to my husband, we were living rent-free in exchange for him taking over the church elder duties and cemetery management for his nephew. My husband had been covering the property taxes and the maintenance must have been a relief for the nephew. For my husband, it was not only for the sake of his distant living nephew, but also to preserve the family home passed down through generations. With my husband's explanation, my oldest son's wife seemed to grasp the situation and she snapped back at him. I understand about the church, but why are we being told to leave? She yelled without flinching. My husband explained with a sly smile. For quite some time, there has been a talk of developing the area around the house into residential land. It seems the nephew had been holding off on the development, out of consideration for us, but since we were kicked out, he told the nephew it was okay to proceed. The nephew was also furious after hearing about my oldest son's wife's heartless actions. Since she wouldn't take on the church elder or cemetery management duties, the nephew saw no need to be considerate and suddenly demanded that she vacate the house. Listening to this, I understood why my husband had encouraged our second son to buy a large house. Either way, my husband had been thinking that we would eventually have to leave that house and he probably chose our second son as a cohabiting partner over our unreliable oldest son. From my perspective, both were unreliable, but comparing the two wives, a difference emerged. The calculating oldest son's wife, realizing she was at a disadvantage, quickly hung up. That night, my oldest son and his wife came to our second son's house and my oldest son's wife asserted their rights. Since we are living in that house, now father-in-law will find us a replacement, and of course, he will pay the rent. My husband and second son were about to explode with anger at the selfish demands of my oldest son's wife, when my second son's wife interjected with an unrelented comment. Uh, Jessica, we bumped into each other in a strange place the other day, didn't we? At this sudden and inexplicable remark, my second son looked ready to erupt in anger, but his wife showed everyone her mobile phone. On the screen was an image of my oldest son's wife arm in arm with a man none of us had ever seen before. The moment she saw the picture, the color drained from my oldest son's wife's face. The second son's wife continued to press her. Uh, I work near that spot, so I have seen you there a few times. She said, showing more pictures one after the other. My oldest son's wife's previous bravado was gone, and she looked down, trembling. Even my unreliable oldest son couldn't hold back and yelled, You've been cheating on me? Normally, one would give up at this point, but my oldest son's wife wasn't silent. That's right, I have been cheating. If you didn't have any assets, I would have never married a man like you. Whether defiant or proud, my oldest son's wife spat out her usual harsh words and left with one last parting shot. A man without a house or land? I'll be the one to break up with you. Without a single word of apology, she left my second son's house. Afterwards, my oldest son and his wife officially divorced. He took custody of their child and substantial compensation was demanded. With the evidence photos taken by my second son's wife, there was no way to deny it. My oldest son rented an apartment and lived with his child. But since we live nearby, I go over to take care of my grandchild. I was worried. They might be lonely without their mother, but they seem happier and more energetic without their disliked mother around. My oldest son's wife, after the divorce and losing the compensation money, borrowed money from her lover and was pressured to repay it, so she fled somewhere. It was probably good for my oldest son to part ways sooner, and all of this was thanks to my second son's wife's efforts. We recently found out that my second son's wife is expecting a baby. Though she often seems absent-minded, it turns out she's the most responsible of all, and I'm sure she will be a great mother. I'll have to take care of two grandchildren now, so I want to keep doing my best.